my channel. This is Laura. Thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you had a wonderful day. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Laura. I surely would appreciate it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video and you will not miss out on an episode. If you are a regular here, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Today, the recipe that I'm going to share with you is an old bakery favorite. I live in, in Texas and we have a lot of Mexican bakeries and this pastry is called Campechanas. And basically what it translates to is a puff pastry. It is made with nothing but flour, shortening, a little bit of sugar, and a whole lot of love. But they are delicious. And there are several versions of it. So we're going to start off with the base of this recipe. I will go on to make the other ones, the fruit filled ones, in a later video. I just wanted to introduce this recipe to y'all and I hope you enjoy it. And I will have the recipe link below. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I will get back with you. Okay guys, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget the thumbs up and the comments really do a lot for my channel. So, so thank you very much if you are the one hitting that thumbs up. It really helps a lot. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started. The recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you today are called campechanas. This is a Mexican pastry. I will remind you this is my version of the campechanas. I love them. Let's go ahead and get started with the paste so we can set it aside and have it ready. So I'm going to do this by hand just so you know you don't need any special equipment or anything. I'm going to add in my flour and my shortening and we're just going to give this a mix and mix it until it's very very creamy. It might take a little bit of elbow grease but it will be worth it. So we're just going to take it and smash it first until everything is incorporated and it's real light and fluffy. You could do this on the stand mixer if you wanted to or on a handheld mixer but you know, why dirty all that stuff when you can just do this by hand? Okay, and this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to set this aside and get ready to start our dough. Okay, for the dough, you can do this on the countertop or in a bowl. It does not matter. You can do this on your stand mixer with the dough hook, but I'm just going to do it right here. Here we have our flour. We have our sugar, our salt, and our shortening. And we're just going to toss all that in there and we're going to give this a good mix. We're going to start adding the water slowly. I will leave you a recipe that I use exactly with the water but you're going to have to gauge it for the water because sometimes the flour is different in different areas. It could be drier, it could be wetter, it just depends. So you're going to have to gauge the water but I will give you an approximation of what you're going to use. Okay here we go with the water. Like I said a little bit at a time. You can always add but you can't take out. Okay guys, it's already mixed. I am going to take it out of the bowl and on the clean counter, I'm going to knead it for about 10 minutes. This has to be very, very soft. So you have to put the muscle to it to get the dough very soft. I'm going to continue to knead this and I will be back. The dough is soft. We are ready to move on. As you can tell, it's very, very smooth. It does need, need a lot of kneading, just FYI. Okay, we are going to cut it in half. Try to get the portions the same size. And we are going to let this rest for about 15 minutes, just so that we're able to roll this out. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we are going to move on to the next step. I had the dough sitting up here. I just covered it. We are going to take it and we are going to roll it out. Okay, I turned it lengthwise. So when I wrap it around the rolling pin, I won't have trouble. Just try to get it as thin as you can. Now we're going to take half of our paste that we made and we're going to smear it all the way around the whole thing. You don't want to make it thick. You just want to smear it all the way around. And we'll reserve the rest. Now we're going to take our rolling pin and here on the edge we are going to wrap this around the rolling pin. If you need to take your dough hook to help you, you can. Now pull it up and start pulling and start rolling the dough. 
and this is how you get your layers kind of like that phyllo dough okay so now you have this here wrapped around and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it off of the rolling pin just slowly push it off just like that okay so now you have this here and you're gonna stretch it we're gonna stretch it okay and if you get a little bit of the paste on you that's okay if it gets a little if it gets out that's perfectly fine now these this is the rolling pin that you need this will not work with the regular rolling pin I had a hard time finding these when I needed one but I ordered some on Amazon I will link it below if you don't have one okay so now we're just gonna move this guy over and we're gonna do the same thing with this one we take the remainder of the paste and smear it on and then we take our rolling pin once again, go to the edge, get your dough scraper, lift it, and start to pull. Okay, so here we have this one more time. We're going to take it off of the pin. Okay, and then we're going to stretch it out. We set this aside, clean off our area here. I have a little bowl of oil, vegetable oil. I'm going to take it, rub my hands with it, and just rub it all over the dough, just like that. Okay, now we take one of our, our uh, baking sheets, and I have some parchment paper. I'm going to take this first strand here, okay, and we're going to go to the edge. Pull it as much as you can without tearing it, okay? So we take the edge, you fold it under, grab a, a chunk of it like that, just like a, a tortilla uh, bowl. And then you take it on the counter and roll it like this. Okay? So it's going to end up looking just like that. Put it on your tray. So you take the end, fold it under, and pinch off a, a bite. Roll it in a ball and put it on your tray. If you start getting some of the paste on the counter, just wipe it off. And I'm just going to keep going with these until I'm done. Okay, we got all the little balls ready here. I'm going to set these aside so they can rest for about 10 minutes. We'll be right back. We're going to move on to the next step. I have myself another cookie sheet, a uh, baking sheet with the parchment paper. And I have the oil in a little bowl here. Okay, we're gonna take one of our little balls here and we're gonna rub some oil on the counter. And that just helps so that they don't stick. And then we just press it forward. And you make them the size that you want. Okay, I'm gonna make them about this size right there. And then we take our sugar that I have here in a container set it right here so you can see it let me spread this out a little bit more and then you just take it pound it down on the sugar and just lay it there so you can get sugar all over it and start laying them down on your cookie sheet okay and there we go we have all six of them I have preheated the oven to 375 degrees we will bake these for 25 minutes and then we're going to take them out raise the temperature to 425 for the last 10 minutes okay i will be back we're going to continue to roll these hey everybody the campechanas are out of the oven and look at that, that's what they're supposed to look like. I'm going to break one open so you can hear the crunch and see the layers of this pastry. Basically what it is, is like a puff pastry. Beautiful. Okay, I brought you super close in so that you can hear this. I'm going to break it right over the plate here. Listen to this crunch. And look at the layers. Look at how beautiful that looks. I'm gonna bite into it. Close up. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, everybody. I hope you heard that crunch. Here it is again. Mmm. Real nice and flaky. These are delicious. Now, they do make these with other flavors, like with lemon or pineapple in the middle. We'll do those on another video. I just wanted you to get the base recipe down for the, the basic ones that they have at, in our Mexican bakeries. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I really enjoyed making it for you. And the recipe will be linked down below, as always. Please leave a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and share with family and friends. Okay, guys, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.